Every time I go to the center now, I get excited, I get energized, I almost feel euphoric. I really can't totally express <laughs> it with words, but I know I'm gonna be a mender until the day I drop. <laughs> yeah. And I might come back and help out. Ed, look at here's the Von Frankenbergs. We had at some party that we were doing. Let's Brewery. Oh boy, those were the days. My name is Carolyn Rose. I am number one, a volunteer at MEND, but I also am a co-founder of the organization. My name is Ed Rose, volunteer at MEND, and I was one of the co-founders. We met each other at San Fernando Valley State College in 1961 in a ballroom dancing class. <laughs> So we danced our way to heaven. <laughs> you know, in the early 60s, there was a lot of things going on. The farm workers were starting to organize. And then I, I met Caesar, and to me, he was really an inspiring guy. And uh, that really inspired him to mm -hmm. want to help people. We were involved in our parish and uh, we had a Christian social service group. It was evident that there was extreme poverty in the Northeast San Fernando Valley, and we felt we needed to um, address those issues. We had about seven or eight people from our parish. I thought, well, you know, we need more people than this. We had really nothing when we started except our desire to help people. Initially, there was three parishes, and then we had uh, one black church called the Soul Willing Revival, uh, center, and um, Reverend Monder was our one and only chaplain. We were trying to figure out a name, and Reverend Monder ca came up with this thing like massive L economic neighborhood development. And well, we weren't massive; we, we had no money, we had hardly any people, we had a lot of needs. So then, our our then secretary was uh, Peter Travis, who came up with meet each need with dignity. It fit us. It really fit us well. If you don't. Uh, respect a person's dignity, then you might as well not help them. In the very early days, we did basic things. We had furniture, food, and clothing. For the first 17 years, we were totally volunteer. It got to the point where it was more than we could handle. We were just growing so fast that we needed somebody that wasn't volunteer, that was actually going to be on site. And it just grew from there. And we had several storefronts up and down Van Nuys, Van Nuys, Van Nuys Boulevard until uh, we got one, became our center. We needed to expand into other areas. I was on a, a border with the farm workers. While I was there, I met a, some nuns, <laughs> and those nuns told some other nuns. <laughs> so it ended up, we had a total of 11 nuns. We wanted to uh, be able to educate the people to someday say, thank you, man, but we don't need you. A lot of the clients actually did go on to break the bonds of poverty, like Baltazar Martinez. He was, his family walked from Silmar all the way to Pacoima to get their food. And he and his two sisters all have college educations. And Baltazar was on our board at one time. It's just been marvelous. We were there from the beginning, but so were a lot of people. We played a, a part, but a yeah. small part. Oh, we could have never done it by ourselves. Oh, Lord, no. Oh, no. It's been a community love project. This allowed us to put a face on poverty. People would not think of poor people as in numbers or percentages. They think of us as human as beings, human. as people who suffered, needed help. As we went along, I started to realize, you know, we were helping these people, but they were helping us.